Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. Yesterday, we started studying a new topic, which is the power of praise. This is one of our spiritual weapons. Another one of our spiritual weapons is praise. Praise is a spiritual weapon. And we talked about standing in faith, believing God for breakthroughs in our lives, whether it's for physical health or whether it's for marriage or family or children, whether it's for a job, whether it's for your finances. The the key to victory is standing in faith. One of the greatest tools and weapons and keys for getting the victory And what do you do while you are standing and what will bring victory is praise. Praise is one of your powerful tools for bringing the victory. First Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18 says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And as I said yesterday, you don't give thanks for the problem, for the pain, for the lack, for the need. No, you give praise for the victory, for the answer, for the healing, for the provision, for the the thing that you're believing God for. You give thanks and praise for it, even if you have not seen it yet, especially when you have not seen it yet. Because, as I explained to you yesterday, that if you missed the teaching series called The Law of Faith, that is so vitally important. Few Christians really understand that there is a difference between God's faith and man's faith, or human faith, or natural faith. Natural faith believes what you see. And they say, when I see it, then I'll believe it. But that is not God's faith. God's faith believes before you see. God looked at the darkness and said, light be and light was. And so the God kind of faith believes what you cannot see or feel or touch based on God's word. God said it, that settles it, I believe it, no matter what I see, no matter what I feel. God says I am victorious, even if it doesn't look like I'm victorious, I believe I am. God said I'm healed, by his stripes I was healed. First Peter 2.24, by his stripes you were healed. So you believe you were healed and you are healed even before you feel healed, look healed, act healed. You believe you're healed. God said that you have the victory in all situations. So you believe you have the victory in your home, in your family, in your marriage, in your children, in your job, in your finances, before you even see it. And how do you demonstrate your faith? By praise. By thanks and praise, giving thanks and praise to God that you do have the victory, even when you don't see it or before you see it. First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. We looked at this yesterday, but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. But notice, thanks be to God is said before he gives us the victory. So you need to realize that you need to give thanks to God before you see the victory. You give him thanks, not for the problem, but for the victory, for the answer, for the deliverance, for the healing, for the finances, for the miracle before you see it. Give him praise for it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm healed. I'm free. I'm victorious. Our family is restored. I've got the best job I've ever believed, I've ever had. Even before you see it. 
We've, we're debt free. Praise God. Our bills are paid even before you see it. Giving him praise. Second Corinthians two fourteen also says, now thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in Christ. Giving thanks and praise to God is so powerful and sad to say it has been um, hidden. It is a hidden weapon that few Christians have known and activated. But if you will activate the power of praise in your life, you will see victories come. Miracles, deliverances, healings, supernatural provision, open doors that you have been praying for. It will bring the victory. Giving praise unto God. Let me show you. I I told you yesterday, today, I would show you scriptures that tell us the very thing. Now, I already showed you the one in 1 Corinthians 15, 57. It says, but thanks be to God before it says he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to understand that we do give thanks unto God even before he, we see the victory. But then let's turn over to some more scriptures. Psalm 8, go to Psalm 8 and verse 2, Psalm 8, 2, it says, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. Now you, you might say, but Cherry, what does that have to do with praise? I want to show you something where it says thou hast ordained strength. The word strength can also be translated praise. And there are other translations of the Bible that translate the word strength as praise. But let me show you, first of all, Jesus himself interpreted Psalm 8 to and quoted, I mean, quoted Psalm 8 to, but used the word praise. Do you remember when the children were crying out praise and Hosanna to Jesus? Matthew 21 Go to Matthew, the book of Matthew, gospel of Matthew, 21, verse 16, 21, 16. And the Pharisees said unto him, do you not hear what they say? Talking about the children, what they, these children are saying. Jesus said unto them, yes, have you never read out of of the mouths of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. He quoted Psalm 8 too, but he changed the word strength to praise. Psalm 8 too says from the lips of children and infants, or no, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, let me get the correct tra- version, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast ordained strength. Jesus quoted it, but he said, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings, thou hast perfected praise. Jesus himself changed the word strength to praise. And then, if you were to read that in the Septuagint. Now, the Septuagint was a translation of the Old Testament Hebrew scriptures translated by 70 or some say 72 Hebrew Jewish scholars, scribes into Greek. They, it was the Jews who the Jewish scholars who translated the old Testament from Hebrew into Greek because 
in the time of the Greek Empire and the Roman Empire, Greek became the worldwide language. And there were Jews that were scattered that did not understand Hebrew. So the Hebrew scholars, Jewish scholars, translated it, the Old Testament, from Hebrew into Greek. And when they translated Psalm 8-2, into the Septuagint, into the Greek language, they changed the word strength to praise. And they also translated it as thou hast ordained praise. So they translated the Hebrew Psalm 8 to as the word praise. Also, um, the Douay rhymes translation, which is a literal translation of the Latin Vulgate into English, they also translated it as praise. And then the English Darby Bible also translated it as praise. And then other of our newer modern translations of the Bible did translate Psalm 8 to the word strength was changed to the word praise. So if we see Jesus quoted Psalm 8 two, and even Jesus used the word praise. We can understand then that that Hebrew word equals praise. Now let's read it then. And I'll use a modern translation that uses the word praise. Psalm 8 two, from the lips of children and infants, you have ordained praise. Because of your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. You have ordained praise because of the enemy. Praise because of the enemy to silence the foe and the avenger or to silence the enemy. That's powerful. Now the word enemy there. The first time, because of your enemies, that word enemy is the Hebrew word sarar, T-S-A-R. Now, you will recognize that the word sar, T-S-A-R, and different forms of it, C-Z-A-R, or if you're in Australia, you'd say C-Z-A-R, the, the Russian czar. It's the same word. They also got the word Caesar, Caesar or czar. That word is the word enemy and it means to bind, to tie up, to shut up, to besiege. And so because of those who besiege and bind, God has ordained praise. Praise is the answer when you are feeling like you're being bound and tied up and besieged. And that word also means to cause distress. So if you are distressed, if you are distressed, if you are besieged, if you feel like you're being bound and tied and shut up in a situation, if any of these words, if you have an enemy coming against you, then God has ordained praise as the cure. I've heard this taught also called the praise cure, the praise cure. It will cure you. It'll cure your sickness. It'll cure every situation because of the enemy. When you are in besiege, when you're being besieged and in distress, I mean to say, then God has ordained praise for your answer, for your cure, for your victory. And then it goes on and it says in the, in Psalm 8 to, to still the enemy and the avenger, the word still to still the enemy, the word still means to cause, to cease and desist. To cause, to cease and desist. You know, I command you right now to cease and desist from your actions in Jesus name. Well, that's what it means to cause, to cease and desist, to put an end 
to put an end to, to exterminate, exterminate, destroy, and remove. To exterminate, destroy, and remove. God has ordained praise because of your enemy. When you feel like you're in distress and you're being besieged, then God has ordained praise to cause the enemy to cease and desist, to cease and desist, to put an end to the enemy, to exterminate and destroy and remove the enemy and the avenger. That's what Psalm 8 2 says. So notice we see the power of praise here as an, as a weapon to cause, to exterminate and destroy the enemy, to exterminate and destroy and remove the enemy. Hallelujah. So we have now seen praise is number one. It, first of all, it is one of the greatest em- evidences and demonstrations of faith. It is one of your greatest evidences and demonstrations of your faith. If you say you are in faith, if you say you are believing God, then demonstrate it, show it praise, giving praise for the victory, for the healing, for the deliverance, for the miracle is your demonstration, giving praise for it. And then number two, it is a weapon against the enemy to silence, to cause, to cease and desist, to exterminate, destroy and remove your enemy. Glory to God. Let me show you another scriptural proof. Go to Psalm 149, Psalm 149 verses one through nine. Um, that's the whole Psalm. I'm just going to read the whole Psalm. It actually, the portion I want to show you starts in verse five, but I'm going to start in verse one because it's all about praise. Psalm 149, praise the Lord, sing to the Lord, a new song, his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker Let the people of Zion be glad in their king. Let them praise his name with dancing and make music to him with tambourine and harp. For the Lord takes delight in his people. He crowns the humble with salvation. Now look at verse five. Let the saints That's you and me. Let the saints rejoice in this honor and sing for joy on their beds. Now, verse six, may the praise of God be in their mouths and a double edged sword in their hands. Well, what is our two edged sword? Of course, the word of God. Ephesians chapter six and Hebrews four twelve. the word of God is sharper than any two edged sword. So let the praise of God be in their mouths and a double edged sword in their hands. That's also the word of God in your mouth. Verse seven. Why? Why? What does it do? Verse seven to inflict vengeance to inflict vengeance. On the nations and punishment on the people, verse eight, to bind their kings with fetters, their nobles with shackles of iron to carry out the sentence written against them. This is the glory of all his saints. Praise the Lord. Now we look at the New Testament. Where Paul said that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and the rulers of the darkness of this world. So the principalities and powers, these are the spiritual princes. 
Even, do you remember in Daniel, when Daniel prayed to God and Gabriel came to him, but he said, I was delayed by the prince of Persia. Well, the prince of Persia is actually the spiritual demonic principality that ruled over that nation. And there are spiritual principalities of darkness that Satan has assigned to rule over all nations. And there are other spiritual principalities and powers that do different things that inflict sickness, inflict financial loss, inflict accident, pain, injury. There are spiritual principalities, rulers dark of the darkness. There are demon spirits all under the command of Satan, who is the ruler of the kingdom of darkness. And these are the ones that Paul wrote, said we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers of the darkness, rulers of the darkness. Now, how do we do it? We do it with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And we do it. Of course, everything is with faith, faith in the word. But then we do it with praise. We see in Psalm 149 that we use praise as a weapon on the enemy to inflict vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples. And think of that. As the kingdom of darkness. Verse 8. To bind their kings with fetters. And their nobles with shackles of iron. So that when you praise. You actually are binding Satan. And the demon spirits. The principalities, powers, rulers. Whatever it is. That have brought their the problem. The trial against you. You are binding them. It says to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with shackles of iron. So, and I'm going to get into this. Stay, stay tuned to the future broadcasts because I'm going to explain to you how and why this works. And, and tomorrow I'm going to show you examples in scripture where it actually was done and it worked victory for the people again and again. I'll show you several examples. It worked praise. And you probably can start think of thinking of these examples yourself right now, but praise binds Satan. It, it stops him. It causes him to cease and desist and it removes him. It defeats him. Praise is one of your great spiritual weapons. And I want to encourage you to praise the Lord for victory, for answers, for breakthroughs, for miracles today, all day long. Say, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. Praise the Lord. I'm healed. Praise the Lord. Our bills are paid. Our debts are removed. Give God praise and glory. Shouts of praise to honor him for your victory. And you will see the victory worked and the miracle worked, the power released. I'm telling you, I'm giving you and showing you your spiritual weapons and your keys to victory. Use the blood, apply the blood of Jesus as we talked about in the last few weeks. Take communion and seal your covenant promises and settle your faith on it. And now shout the praises of victory. Make declarations and decrees of victory and praise, praise, praise. We'll be looking more at the scriptures of the examples in the Bible of those who have gone out praising. Remember Jehoshaphat. I've used these spiritual weapons and I've seen miracles and breakthroughs. I've taken communion and set my faith on the promises And seen the answers to prayer and breakthroughs. I've taken the times, I've seen the times in my life where I've just shouted and decreed in my own home, 
in my own solitude, I'm shouting, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for the victory. We have the victory. We have the breakthrough. Thank you for the answers. Thank you for the finances. Thank you for the healing. And I have seen victories come. I have seen miracles happen. You need to get aggressive. Don't be like most Christians who just sit back and cry to God. Oh, God, heal me. Oh, God, save me. God, why don't you meet this need? Why didn't you protect? Why didn't you deliver? Why don't you provide? They're not using their spiritual weapons. You need to learn them and use them. Be diligent to use them. Remember, I've given you this example before that God comes in and makes a great um, show of defeating your enemy when the devil comes in to steal, kill and destroy. He defeats him for you. But then he hands you the weapons and he says, the next time the devil comes, you use the weapons. So the next time the devil comes, you're still crying. God, save me. God, save me. God, help me. God, deliver me. Get the devil off of me. And God is telling you, use the weapons. Use the word of God. Use the name of Jesus. Use the blood. Use the covenant. Shout your victory. Get your victory. He's put the weapons in your hands. I encourage you do it today do your part now join me again tomorrow and remember god loves you you're blessed and highly favored by the lord